Hi, it's Dwyer. It is the last day of January 2021. Gamblersadvisory.com, a free site. Bettingangle.us, a free site. Let's talk boxing. Let's talk Caleb Plant's successful defense of his title over mandatory contender Caleb Truax. But first remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now let me just say, in a flat-footed era, where a lot of fighters are pot shotters or stalkers, Caleb Plant threw down a magnificent performance that showed us movement, right? A guy on his back foot using the entire ring, right? Operating behind a jab at times on his front foot, completely disempowering an opponent, roughing him up. The jab was crisp. The left hook was great. Plant is very sudden. He dictates the pacing. He's fast-handed. Opponents have to think twice, even as they're stepping inside, about his hand speed and about his suddenness. Plant, who's an unbeaten fighter, Right, has a share of the belt at 168 pounds, is an elite fighter. I want that to be understood. If you're just looking at this fight and measuring his performance, it was magnificent. Right, This is the kind of performance where Caleb Truax understood after the fight that he had been beaten, that he had a shot at the title and was simply outclassed. But, this is a gambling channel, right? We're trying to get an edge on the casino in future fights. So, let me just say this. I believe at 28 years old and in his prime, Caleb Plant has a secret. Now, I want people to be clear on this. This is just one man's opinion. I'm going to speculate here. I have absolutely no insider information. None. Right? I'm just going by my own two eyes, but I do believe that every gambler has to think for themselves. That the public narrative sometimes is off. It's based on assumptions that are not true. If you're watching a fighter and you see an angle of vulnerability and it's your money that you're gambling, well, your bet should reflect what you've seen. So, let's pretend we're trainers. Let's pretend we're Eddie Reynoso, a trainer with one of the sport's biggest challengers to Caleb Plant at 168 pounds, Canelo. Let's say Canelo comes to you and says, hey, this Caleb Plant guy, he's creating a lot of buzz, a lot of people are talking about him. He's a damn good fighter. If I were to fight him, what would be our strategy? Now, what I'm going to do here is take a step back. And again, this is just my speculation based on what I've seen. But just some background here. It's my belief that boxing is a young man's game. Right? Other than the heavyweight division. Elites in the heavyweight division. Most fighters really don't make it past 35 years old. Occasionally, you'll notice a Bernard Hopkins, some Hall of Fame guy, who is living the monk's life. In other words, he's not having donuts in Hopkins' case. Right? The guy's not out late at night. He's in bed. Um, I saw where J-Rock Williams uh left a tweet saying if he were a heavyweight, he would have a bed. That's where he would live. He would see his family on weekends. The bed would be in the gym during the week, <laughs> right? You know, that's the discipline it takes if you're going to survive past 35. So I believe boxing's a young man's game. Huge career-defining fights with huge life-altering paydays. You know the kind of paydays I'm talking about. 
the kind of pay where you think to yourself, do I want to continue my career? My family and I have enough where we can buy the house, we can put money away, we can send the kids to private school, we can live the life we want. And I don't have to risk my health another day. Do I even want to continue? Those fights don't come around that often. When they do, injured or not, you have to take them. Now, it's one of those secrets in boxing, but it pops out every now and then, right? Fighters fight with injuries all the time. Some fighters have chronic injuries. Understand, it's not in their best interest to talk about the injury because you don't want the sanctioning body or you don't want the boxing commission to put you through the ringer so you can get the fight. So we now know that Joe Fraser was blind in his left eye for most of his career, right? Joe Fraser told us that in his later years after he retired. We now know that Harry Greb, one of the best to ever put on gloves, was blind in his right eye for part of his career. We now know that Larry Holmes, who's still with us, who the boxing press can talk with, wore contact lenses into at least one of his fights. Let me give you a story about a pre-existing injury that came to light. I remember it vividly. I was in a bar, Hooters in Campbell, which is no longer with us, unfortunately, with Miguel Cotto fans from this YouTube page to watch Cotto fight the guy I thought was better than Cotto. In fact, I still do. Sergio Martinez. Now, I knew I was in trouble in the first round just looking at Martinez's movement. Martinez's knee, which we knew had troubled him in the past, was so bad when he entered the ring that he couldn't move away from Miguel Cotto, who went on to win that fight by stoppage. Understand. Antonio Margarito's eye, Floyd Mayweather's hands. Fighters know they have vulnerabilities. They have injuries today that they have to compensate for in fights tomorrow and the day after. Now imagine you're 28. You're the champ. You're the unbeaten champion at 168 pounds. Outside of heavyweight Anthony Joshua, a guy in the division, Canelo, is probably the biggest draw in the sport. And you privately know that you move better than Canelo. You have the jab to keep Canelo outside, to win at least four rounds in the fight, to do better than fellow champion Callum Smith did against Canelo. And you have the left hook to end the fight. Should Canelo get careless? Now, I'll just say this, and again, it's my speculation. Now is not the time to take time off for any injury. You and your girl are this close to walk away money. Right? You get walk away money. You get the huge payday. You can continue fighting, but it's your choice. Right? It's your choice. Your career is fulfilled. You've met your financial goals. The money is so big, it could be multi generational. So, now's not the time to take time off for any injury like a rotator cuff surgery. That would require you to take up to two years off. That would take you out of the running for a Canelo fight for that walk away money. A rotator cuff surgery would force you to relearn your right hand, 
because it's the right hand we're talking about. Now, let me just say, I looked at this fight. I was looking at Caleb Plant's right hand. Now, before the fight, I was here online saying, I believe he's a lefty fighting out of an orthodox stance. Well, let's just say Caleb Plant, I'm not sure if he could raise that right hand above his head. Understand he wasn't using his left to force Truax into his right hand. He wasn't trying to set up the right hand at all. I thought that right hand, he threw it at times, right? But let's just say that right hand, that right shoulder looked injured to me. The way he was fighting, and he's magnificent on his left side, magnificent on his left side. But the way he was fighting, he seemed to be compensating for the right hand. Folks, I don't have plants medical reports. I want fighters to make as much money as they can in their careers because I know the career is short, because I know futures can change on one punch. I want plant to be as successful as possible. But as a boxing fan, I looked at his right hand, which he seems to be protecting. I looked at a right shoulder that I didn't think had a lot of flexibility. Understand, he's not even defensive on that right side. You don't see him putting the hand up like this to block shots. No, he keeps that hand low. I think deliberately because I believe something isn't right with the joint. Now, the reason it's important is Truax didn't have ring coverage on a left hook, right? Truax didn't have the equivalent of Plant's left hook. So he couldn't exploit Plant's injured right shoulder, the one that Plant is hiding. He had to deal with Plant's left hand, Plant's left side. He couldn't creep up on this side and then throw the left hook over Plant's right shoulder to hurt him. He couldn't even threaten that left hook because he doesn't have a left hook that covers a lot of real estate. He doesn't know how to drop your left foot for leverage and then lean into a left hook. If you want to see ring coverage in action, I would encourage you to look at David Hay fights. David Hay had a lot of ring coverage, right? A lot of ring coverage. In other words, there's certain guys who, when they throw a punch, they can start six feet away from you. By the time they drop that left foot and then lean forward with the left hook, they've traveled several feet. If you're sudden with it, and you saw it in this fight, with Plant's left hook, if they're sudden with it, they can surprise a guy, right? A guy isn't protected on the right side of their face, and somebody else, out of an orthodox stance, can literally just make up the real estate that fast. Well, Truax isn't built that way. Truax fights mainly upright. He's trying to walk you down. But he's not sudden. He's not from distance. Right? Let me just say, Saul Alvarez has a left hook with ring coverage. One of the secrets to Canelo is he's extremely cerebral right? Extremely cerebral. So is his trainer, Eddie Reynoso. So I'm guessing these guys will have sat down and reviewed Caleb Plant's fights. They're going to understand that if you deal with Plant's left side, his left jab, his left hook, his movement, 
the way he twists his body so his left side's always in front of him. That's a recipe for disaster. If you're fighting him, you can't be coming at him from Plant's left side. You can't allow Plant to set things up with his movement. But I believe Canelo understands that if he focuses on that left hook, if he comes at Plant from Plant's right side, right, if he sets up the threat of the left hook up top, so Plant actually has to try to crouch a bit. Plant has to actually come up with a way where he doesn't have to try to block the left hook with an injured right hand. I think Canelo would do a lot better, a lot better in that fight than I thought before watching this one. Right? I think Plant's a great fighter on his left side. I think he's injured on his right side. Right? There have been fighters who I've looked at their fight styles and I've realized, you know what? This guy has an injury. Some of them went on to great things. Right? Pound for pound lists and stuff like that. I believe Caleb Plant right now is in an interesting position. He's among the best in the sport pound for pound. But he has a bad right shoulder. Right? That's something I'm going to have to think about in his future fights. If he's fighting an opponent who can't throw a left hand from distance, right? He's fine. His legs are among the best in the sport. His timing is among the best in the sport. Right? Truax is bloodied by the middle of his fight. He's bleeding. He's been hit in the face suddenly while he was defenseless by plan. Who's establishing the angles? I believe against the Canelo, you'd see a different kind of movement. Not just Plant moving, you'd see Canelo moving. The two guys would be moving together. Because as Plant moves to hide his right side, Canelo would be moving to be on his right side. Right? I think Plant moves faster than Canelo, but let's just say Canelo is a guy who, number one, would know about Plant's jab, would have his head on a swivel, would have his head low wouldn't be hit in the face, wouldn't be bloodied like Truax is. And Canelo's a guy who understands spacing. So as Plant moves, Canelo would be moving and would be on his right side. Understand, too, if Canelo lands on the right side or if there's the threat of Canelo landing on the right side, that opens up other punches. Let's say Plant decides that he is going to have his hand up like this to protect himself from a left hook up top. Well, that leaves open his body on the right-hand side, doesn't it? Canelo is one of the best in the business at body shots. Understand, too, if Canelo gets to Plant's right side, then that would actually open up Canelo's right hand to get to Plant on his left side. Let me also say too, a fighter who I think is fading, I'll be blunt, Gennady Golovkin, right? I think Canelo beats him should they fight again. And understand, I had Golovkin winning the first two fights, right? Understand, Golovkin throws an excellent left hand from distance. Look at the Vanis Martirosian fight. So, a fight against Golovkin would be interesting. You would understand the value of spacing. Understand, as Plant moves, he wants an Ali effect. He wants you to throw punches so 
he can make you miss. Right? He wants you to try to engage him because then that's when he can show his brilliance. You're trying to throw punches. He's killing your cadence by hitting you with stiff jabs. Right? You try to get in a little bit too close. He's hitting you with left hooks. He's moving away. If I'm a judge, I'm thinking, well, that interaction plants on top. He's the guy I have winning this round. That's unless he fights a guy like Golovkin, who is far away. Golovkin likes a cushion. Understand what that cushion gives him. He doesn't have to match you punch for punch. You don't have anything to counter because he's not throwing punches. Right? But because Golovkin has ring coverage on that left hand, right? Golovkin throws an unorthodox left hand, right? It's kind of like a blend. It's not straight, but it's not really a hook. It's somewhere in between. Right? Understand what would happen. Plant would be moving. Golovkin would be trying to land a left hand from distance, but wouldn't be throwing punches. There wouldn't be the exchange where a judge can say, oh, Plant made a miss. Right? There's nothing to miss. Golovkin's not throwing punches. Golovkin's coming forward. He's stalking you. He's trying to get on the right side of you. Golovkin, who's much slower, much slower than Plant, would have a shot on Plant because the dynamic would look like Plant's running. If Plant tries to get close enough to land the jab, to bust up Golovkin's face, then he's within arm's range, which is where Golovkin really wants you. Right? Golovkin doesn't want to get close enough to you where you can clinch him. So, I'll just say, Plant's going to outclass folks who can't hit him from distance on the right side. Right? Who don't have the left hook or the unorthodox left hand to make something happen. Right? But, Canelo has ring coverage on his left hook. Right? Golovkin has ring coverage on his left hand. Let's just say those would be blockbuster fights for everyone financially, but also stylistically. Right? My takeaway from Plan's fight against Truax, other than Plan's magnificent performance when you fall into his trap, of being vulnerable to his left side is that something is worse than I thought in his right shoulder. Now that's how I see it. I'm guessing the next uh, plant press conference, someone's going to say to him, hey man, what's up with your right shoulder? And he's going to say, hey, it's, it's good, it's good, right? Folks, I'm just telling you, you don't see the guy raising it up to block raising it up like this, it doesn't happen. He stands this way, he's hitting you with the jab, this shoulder's down. Occasionally he throws the shoulder, he throws the right hand. It's hardly ever a wide hook. You notice, it's just a straight right, it's limited motion. I don't believe that shoulder's 100% healthy. I think it's the kind of thing where he can work up the courage to throw it a few times around, very few times. This reminds me of King Arthur against Anthony Yard, where you see the guy hesitant to throw the non-jab hand. Then when he throws it, it has limited motion, right? Only throws it for obvious openings to convince the other guy that it's there. I question Plant's right shoulder. I think it's germane because Canelo has a great left hook. I think it's germane because Golovkin has a left he could land from distance. Again, the Vanis Mortarosian fight. 
That's how I see it. Let's see what happens at 168. I'll concede David Benavides doesn't really have a lot of ring coverage on the left hand, right? He's a guy who wants you in the pocket. But understand, you have some guys out there. Billy Joe Saunders, who's a southpaw at 168, right? I'm not sure what happens if he fights Caleb Plant. That's a fascinating fight because Saunders obviously can throw that left hand, which would be his dominant hand, from way outside. I don't know how Plant compensates against another southpaw who can move. Anyway, that's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section of this video. We're just calling it as we see it. I'm just speculating here about what I think's an injury. You think for yourself. Thanks for stopping by.